So, uh, about, uh, I would say, nine, in the 90s, early 90s, I read an article about, uh, about HIF-1, hypoxia-induced factor 1. And uh, the, the whole idea was, okay, let's describe that, by the way, those guys who discovered that got the Nobel Prize a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. So that's the first. It was in the 90s, so they just won the Nobel Prize. That's a long time to wait, man. It's down. Okay, you're back up, Doc. So uh, the question was, uh, for many years, how, how you stabilize a oxygen carrier? And there are a couple of methods. So I choose, as a carbohydrate chemist, I choose the method of <coughs> using the chemistry that I did my PhD and uh, my chemical uh, engineering degree. And I decided to modify the hemoglobin with the sugar. Mm -hmm. So if you look on the slide, if the audience look on the slide, they can see what actually happening here. You take the red blood cells, you take out from the red blood cell the hemoglobin, and then you separate the heme out of the globin, heme globin, and then you replace the globin the part, the carbohydrate piece, you replace it, you replace the protein, globin, with a carbohydrate uh, polymer. So what you get is a heme carbohydrate, more or less. It's just, uh, it's more complex than that. But in principle, I want the audience to understand the concept. As a, as a consequence, you get actually a very interesting uh, situation. You have a solution now that has a, a molecule that is 5,000 times smaller than red blood cells. It's a stable in room temperature, okay? And it can uh, deliver oxygen. Uh, next slide. I'll do it, I'll do it yeah. here. I noticed too, you have on here that uh, you're free of reactive oxygen species, which is a big problem with reperfusion injury. But For sure. I, I don't mean to jump on top of your talk. I just wanted to mention it. Yes, yes. Because I saw it. I may uh, miss here uh, and there some details because uh, I need to go over that quite quickly. I know. And we're, we're take your time. I think we have plenty of time. I do know that my colleagues, though, are very concerned about reperfusion injury. It is a big problem, uh, sure. whether it be on coronaries. And I, you know, I forgot even to mention earlier with Dr. Majewski talking about the using the probe on the heart distal to the bypasses because we measure flows and we measure runoff, but do we really measure effectiveness? But that's a, that, we'll go back to that question during the discussion. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the, the molecule, what we're talking here, is a co complete control on the amount of oxygen molecule that you deliver to the tissue, basically. It's not like in blood that you really, you don't know because of the nature. Each uh, red blood cell contains 300 million molecules of hemoglobin. And uh, it's hard to calculate what is the efficiency, efficacy of that delivery. Here mm -hmm. you have a, a pure calculation, very accurate, how, ma how many oxygen molecules you will deliver and you control it. There's a total control on that. So uh, it's like a chemical reaction, basically. So when you look on the limitation of blood, if you look, if you read that, you can see that uh, you have, for example, limit blood is limited. Yeah, we're having that problem now, right? It's a, it you need refrigeration, right? It, it's a, it goes bad after thirty days, and you need a, what you call the, a, I would say. There is a problem of uh, the size sometimes, the way you administer that. So all those problems goes away with this type of molecule. First of all, stability. I calculate, you know what's Arrhenius plot? It's the, you do it, any drug need to be Arrhenius plot. It means you, you torture the molecule with heat 
and you ask yourself how long the, heat, the molecule is stable in a certain condition, we're talking about indefinitely. Really? Indefinitely. You know why? Carbohydrate, very stable chemistry. Hmm. The second thing is the refrigeration. You don't need refrigeration. You can actually boil the molecule. It still, it still retain the ability to bind to oxygen because the heme is a chemical structure. Remember, now, now you don't have a sort of biology. It's more chemical, pure chemistry. It's chemistry on chemistry. The heme bind the oxygen and that bind to a support mechanism. In nature, the support is the protein, the globin. But here, I replace it with the sugar. And by the way, I'm the only one who did it. So we're talking about totally new approach to the stabilization of those type of molecule. People try to do it for almost 100 years. I'm not the first one. And people were su quite successful to su stabilize with the chemistry. I'm not the one who established the chemistry of the stabilization. My contribution to the field is the carbohydrate stability or chemistry, which was not there before I play with that. Mm -hmm. That's the story. So if you look on the next, I will do the next slide. The next slide describes the size, right? We're talking about red blood cells compared to that molecule. The amount of uh, the ability to carry oxygen has also a size solution. What you do is that you reduce the size, you create a lot of benefits. For example, you can create a capability of oxygenate tissue in a completely different configuration. The carrier in this case allow you to create a different curve of saturation. You, it's not anymore what you know is blood. It's not blood. It's not artificial blood. This is an oxygen. It's a synthetic ox oxygenation molecule, mm -hmm. which has a completely different behavior than uh, blood. It's not blood. See, I'm familiar with perflubron and also fluosol. Yes. Oh, those, I remember those. Those products, they are not our competitor. Okay, they, they're simply molecules that were developed for many years, but they were not successful getting into the marketplace. Why? For different reasons, stability, and also the ability to uh, deliver oxygen. Mm -hmm. I mean, people doing experiments show that uh, it's deliver oxygen. I believe there's a, it's a philosophy. It's a philosophy of chemistry. You, you could say, how come that, uh, that, uh, that chemistry is, uh, you can get philosophy in chemistry, but I believe that if nature choose him as a way to deliver oxygen, chemists can come and say, you know, I can do it differently. I don't want to compete with billions of years of how oxygen is connected to a carrier. All I want to do is to control this, the, the, the cap my capability to carry the carrier. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to compete with the carrier. That already, nature already solved the problem with the him. It's, it's, it's conservative structure. And I'm, even today, people really don't, chemists not fully understand all the, I would say, I call it a secret that that him contained within the ability to carry and release oxygen. So if I have a capability to stabilize something that was studied by nature for billions of years, I don't want to compete with that. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason they had problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know they, they really weren't, um, they, I remember it was, a, it was a hot topic for a very long time. And then uh, over the years, it has just sort of dropped off. And yeah. I really don't hear a whole Efficacy lot more about it. Efficacy and toxicity. 
But you bring up a very good point, and I don't mean to interrupt your, your flow with your presentation, but with what's going on with COVID-19 right now, we have a lot of people, uh, blood banks are, are scrambling. They can't keep up with, uh, sure. and the need is still there. People still need blood. The blood that they have is going to expire. We do have a problem. Sure. And we need to, and, 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 and our, our blood availability in blood banks and our use is a very narrow margin. We, we really don't have a surplus of blood and can exhaust blood banks very easily. And this current problem is, a, is, is one example of it. Finding an alternative is gonna be very important. Please forgive me. Uh, that's one of the drugs that uh, is in development for many years, the fluorocarbons. So uh, people try to do all kinds of, uh, I would say, they try to do encapsulation, all kinds of method of delivery. Uh, I'm not sure that, my, I'm not here to tell you, to tell the audience that that's a not the right technology. I'm going back to my, my philosophical chemical view that there are things that I don't know. We don't know about oxygen delivery, which I don't want to explore <laughs> and find out later what's happening with that chemistry that has a problem. Mm -hmm. From time to time, company try to do it, that doesn't work. Not enough data, a problem of toxicity, certain patients, certain disease indication. I think that the way to go is to make the natural him and try to stabilize in a in a in an intelligent way. That's mm -hmm. my my view. So uh, yeah, I'm and just it makes sense. It's a, they're both are both are naturally occurring substances readily already existing in our exactly. in our body in our physiology. By the way, the sugar that I choose to play with into the in the chemistry, it's an I uh, over the years I specialized in neutral sugars. Sugars has, uh, there are three sort of kingdoms of sugar. There are neutral sugars, no charge. There are uh, acidic sugars and there are basic sugar. And since I, I'm not a neutral, I'm not a basic sugar, I'm not, it's like a different area of expertise. I concentrate on neutral sugars. The, the, reason, the reason I like them, I think that they are the most suitable sugars for many, in many ways, not always, but many ways, they don't have charge. So they are invisible to the immune system. Ah, they actually are not recognized by biological system because they are neutral. So essentially they're inert. Yeah. It's hard to play with them and to do the chemistry that takes, took me years to understand how to manipulate and do the chemistry. But in the end of the day, the beauty, they don't have charge. So they don't bind to anything. It's like Teflon. Mm -hmm. So I actually put Teflon chemistry with the him. Teflon, her, you might want to use something else okay. besides Teflon. Teflon had a bad I'm reputation. I'm talking about it, that, nothing yeah. is stick to yeah. it. That's Let's use the, the new stuff, the copper chef. Okay. Yeah. But the granite understand. stone. Yeah. Okay. Nothing but sticks. I, maybe the analogy is not the right way, mm. but uh, I, I try to say nothing stick to it. Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, the next slide will give you the advantage of the what you call the oxygen carrier. And uh, I will say, go down to the most important thing. Uh, it's just non-toxic. Mm -hmm. I want to say that's uh, now uh, people try to do different modification over the years. Uh, we need to do ours. We need to go to healthy volunteers and show that it's non-toxic. But we didn't see, to date, in animals, I didn't see any toxicity. Well, you know, blood's not universally compatible. Okay. You can give, you, ABO mismatch is a huge problem. For sure. Antibody's a huge problem. For sure. Each one of those, uh, of those, of those uh, 
of those uh, points are valid, but I'm, I, I wanted to concentrate on that thing because people, people say, what is the... And of, obviously non, uh, no uh, immunosuppression. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So uh, we're talking about bioxytran combined the him with a copolymer. That's the concept. That's what we are as a company, what we're trying to do. The implication of that is that it's unlimited from that perspective. We're talking about an oxygenation molecule that has a standing alone, I would say, a duty to perform delivery of oxygen. So uh, one experiment is uh, delivered to the brain. You can see here in a in model in mice, in case of a, it's not validated, it's very difficult to make, to do those models. You see there's an oxygenation after clumping the, the, the blood to the brain. I will not say that the best experiment, but we tried that one and I will go back to it. But uh, that experiment, all those experiments was done independently uh, we were not involved in them. Uh, previously, in, over the years, the company is, is new, uh, but it, they will use the same similar product to that, and, uh, and similar to the BXT25, which is uh, the independence actually show how great you can go with that and how strong you can show that in animals, for example, we, it was uh, replaced their blood. It, it's published, and uh, that uh, experiment demonstrate again uh, was done independently, injecting the similar uh, products and replace the blood of the those dogs, and they recover nicely. So uh, people did it over the years. It's not not the first time, but that direction that you can make what you what I called. A oxygen material is valid. It's not a, it's not a dream. It actually can happen. Uh, in a, about a couple of years ago, one of the problem that remember I'm doing that for we need to our audience need to remember that I'm doing it for many years. And uh, each time I try to solve another problem. For example, the, the next problem, but I start understanding that about 15 years ago, that if I do the molecule, I have maybe a major problem of not distinguishing between nitric oxide and oxygen. Because in naturally, there is a regulation of the ability to distinguish, the heme can distinguish between nitric oxide and, and oxygen binding. If you increase, if you take out the nitric oxide from the vein, you will actually increase blood pressure. So that kind of such a product can kill a patient, increase of blood pressure. So we did experiment in, a, in Harvard Medical School independently, and we showed that that type of chemistry was pre predominantly oxygen binding and didn't show nitric oxide scavenging. This is extremely important issue in toxicity that you don't need to worry about increase of blood pressure. And it was done in diabetic mice. It's a known model that you inject and you compare it to other similar product. And then you measure the blood pressure. If it doesn't go up, the chemistry is okay. That's a big uh, thing that I work on that for a long time. How to create a, what I call predominantly oxygen binding to the heme and not to compete with nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Very important point. So uh, that was the, the, that the animal experiment. I describe here the animal experiment. I can send the people the, the slide if they are interested. I don't want to get into it. I just put it there 
I think that it's important for them to summarize if they are interested in the subject, they can go to the slide and really ex I extract the main point. The main point in different groups was done very nice, very uh, correct, you know, with positive and negative control on the experiment. So uh, uh, the question is that what is the value of the molecule? Now, the, the parameter that was, uh, were there for years in a, another product, we do a similar product to that existing product that was uh, approved for animals' uh, health for giving them or a blood substitute. So we have a similar, uh, I, would, I would say, parameter. So there's nothing unique about that. When you, what, what you call artificial molecule, it's basically the same. It was done, approved by the FDA, that was for animal from another company. So we do something very similar. So I'll just give you the, I give here the main parameter that it's not like we have and there is a suddenly a viscosity goes five to four because we did it with carbohydrate. The parameters are the same. So it's not like we're expecting any changes from what was done to date. The carbohydrate give us stability, as I said, and, and the ability to manufacture that in a very precise way. But it doesn't change the basic parameter that was before the FDA set up with other similar product from, a, from the description, what, the, what the, it need to be viscosity to a range, and it will be, need to be a coefficient will be in that range, and you understand, know, it's there. We are the same, the same standard uh, material. It's a small molecule. It's a very small molecule, KB. six micron. Yeah, it's small. So uh, that's the, that described the, basically the experiment with the nitric oxide scavenging. Uh, what we have here is two groups. It looks like the graphs are kind of condensed, but that's, it is what it is. Uh, that's the way uh, people do the experiment in those, uh, those publications. I, I didn't do it. It was done by third party, which is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say I can refer people to the articles. If they look in, into it, if they want to understand it fully, there, was, uh, there were two groups, that one, uh, three groups, control. The control is, was unknown, was not given to the researcher. They didn't know what's A and B. And we, we see a very distinctive uh, difference in the increase of blood pressure between uh, any, uh, the other product in our product. So we, we basically, I would say, solve the problem. Uh, that's the same experiment. Uh, in this case, uh, it was done with a different uh, a product. We, we, we compare it to a list of product and we published it and demonstrated in a conference a couple of years back and described the, that revolutionary capability of not having nitric oxide scavenging, which is, was the, ba the basic or the reason why carbohydrate allowed that nitric oxide scavenging from happening. Okay, so the carbohydrate was the, is the key why the oxygen is uh, attract to the heme and not nitric oxide. What are the implications of such a, such a product? I want to look, look on this slide. This is a very important slide based on reference on the top, on the bottom. And you can see the, what it means to have an oxygenation molecule. And I want you to look on, on the left side and what it said, aging. Aging is a function of hypoxia. People today, going to hyperbaric chamber to get oxygen, to revitalize, revitalize their tissue. It's in dementia, it's in a, you know, skin rejuvenation, 
And the other disease, every disease that you can think about, hypoxia is, uh, is uh, involved. An element yeah, of it. Very important. Recently, to give you an idea, it was an article by University of Louisiana State University that showed that there is nothing, no drug is approved for Alzheimer's disease. They showed that after 66 times, when they treat patients with hyperbaric chamber, which is totally impractical, they took patients and they show with a PET scan a major improvement in their disease. Actually, it blocked the progression of the disease. And actually, in, in two patients, it's, it's published. And we're talking about hyperbaric chamber. We can do the same thing 20, 30 times more, more efficient and much more powerful by injecting them with a molecule that can oxygenate their tissue and their brain. And what's so important, and I hope you don't mind that, that, that I ask questions while you're going no, through no, the no. flow of this. Not but, at all. You know, one of the things that's fascinating about this is that being that small, you're no longer depending, I'm assuming, and I'm a, this is an assumption, that you're not depending on the microcirculation anymore. You're not depending, completely independent. Once it gets in, it's going to diffuse, it's going to be in the lymphatic system. It's going to diffuse through the tissue itself. Yes. Because it's so small. Yes. Hmm. So, why we choose Stroke? As a small company with a drug that it's, uh, you know, new, what you do, and uh, I think that that's my, our medical director, I have two of them, very experienced. We think that we can put a major impact as a proof of concept show that how powerful the technology to do to help stroke patients because they have a period of about two the what you call the golden hours that nothing they don't get anything and the reason is that you don't know if it's hemorrhagic or ischemic you don't know if it's a blockage or Blood is flowing all over the place. You have to get them scanned. You got to get a CT. And they, they, for two and a half hours, two, three hours, sometimes four hours, sometimes more, they don't get anything. Try to hold your breath for four hours. See what happened to you. Mm -hmm. You die. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened to the that's brain. Why they have deficits? That will happen to the brain. Mm -hmm. So we say only shorter than a few hours. For sure. Mm -hmm. So. We said, what happened if we inject that molecule right in the ambulance or in that time frame before any, any MRI and treatment, we will uh, get oxygen to the part of the brain. It is blocked. Why? Because the, the molecule is so small, it penetrates through the... Through the uh, uh, clot, clot. Mm -hmm. the, the clot is like a fishnet and the blood and the red blood cells get stuck behind the fishnet. But we're talking about a molecule that is 5,000 times smaller than red blood cell. It goes through because the size of the fishnet is big enough for, the, for that molecule to go through with the oxygen in it and release the oxygen in that part of the brain. Now what if it's hemorrhagic? We don't care. So you don't have any blockage there. It's just going to come out. It's going to leak out. Yeah. That's it. Now the damage so we don't, the we don't, on the tissue may not be reversed because that's, you know, the blood on the brain yeah, is not. But, but the idea is that you, are not, you don't care anymore to distinguish between one and another. It's true. You Your treatment inject. will be the same. Yeah. Because this has no additional, it's not going to do any harm to the tissue that the blood, if it is hemorrhagic, is not already going to do. Exactly, exactly. And you still will, perhaps, distally, I'm assuming from the hemorrhagic area, be able to get oxygen to diffuse across. Correct. Possibly. 
Oh, and that's going in circulation for nine, ten hours. Oh, wow. The ten hours, half so time. So it's replenishable. Yeah. By the lungs. Yeah. We go in a circulation for ten hours. Half-life, ten hours. Nine, ten hours. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so uh, those are uh, what I call the companies in the field. It just, if you look on the color, just look on the color on the bottom. We cover many area in stroke that the others cannot cover. And the, the, the only reason is because we're talking about, uh, I, again, I attribute that to the carrier, that, to the philosophy. Remember, him conservative. The sugar is not with the charge, just a supportive mechanism. In the hemoglobin is the same. He, globin is the supportive mechanism to the four heme sugar, the heme structure that carry the oxygen. Only f there are four heme of every hemoglobin, mm -hmm. and the, we just replaced the 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 globin, mm -hmm. the support mechanism. Your scalp. So the outcome is you can actually show. In any area, you are you have a sort of a benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, and I I don't want to get into it because we don't really have the time too much. But that that slide is a discussion of like maybe half an hour. It's let's very loaded. It. What? How many more? I mean, if you don't have that, but let's discuss it. Hey, there's a lot. I mean, let's unpack it. Yes, I mean, I would, I would, I would prefer to go to another slide. This, okay. That, that, that slide is, I would say, it related to the, if you look on other companies, what they do, I, I think that each one will have a, a place. Mm -hmm. It's not like they are a inferior or superior or... If, if one of the companies will get it approved, they will have a place. So mm -hmm. I, I really think that all of them should have a place. I think that in our case, we will, our contribution, that molecule contribution, like any other drug, you know, I, I, I tell you, for example, aspirin. I mean, who, know, who knew when uh, 100 years ago that aspirin would be good for stroke or things like that? You follow me? Or so, heart attack. So we, we don't know. When, once the drug is approved with the parameters by the company, we never know what uh, the benefit. Because you can have a drug there that maybe it didn't work so well in stroke, but it can, can shrink tumors mm -hmm. for some reason. Mm -hmm. so, I have to be blunt, you know, I, I don't think, when I first heard uh, that, uh, that the uh, bioxytran could perfuse clot, I, I, I was pretty, I'm, I'm just be blunt. I was, I was like, okay, you know, let me hear this. But apparently it's not the only one. Yeah, it's not the only one. So perfusing clot is actually something that can happen, I really, I have to say, I was um, yeah. I was very skeptical. Also, the others, uh, what they do, for example, a company in Novox uh, Pharma, which I know very well in Arizona, they do what you call more scavenging. They actually take the oxygen from the surrounding and they deliver that. It's a there are different method of the of how you play with the oxygen. For us, the oxygen is like hemoglobin. You need to go to the lung to pick the oxygen. Some companies, yeah, there are chemistry that you inject the chemistry and the chemistry that you inject scavenge the oxygen from the surrounding tissue. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, it's a different method. I'm not saying it's good, it's bad, it's, it's just different. It's just different. Different, right. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, Good, we're getting into the pandemic. Yeah, we're going to, uh, what happened recently, as we looking on what's going on around us, uh, and uh, 
understanding the the COVID-19, it's very clear that patient get in the situation of ARDS. So, number one, the question is, why suddenly a company that dealing with what I called oxygen or artificial oxygen delivery, right? Suddenly dealing with COVID-19. So what happened? And the story is that it related to the, the way we wanted in our stroke trial about a couple of years ago, four years ago, uh, the idea was very simple. If I want to go to the FDA and I want to show to the FDA that by give He has to stream it. Maybe I say something? <laughs> yeah, it was your fault. Okay, you know, we have a lot of people watching and they just, they're telling me the stream went down. I know, we fixed it. Okay, good. Okay, are we good? Yeah. We're back? Yeah. Welcome back, I'm sorry everybody, please forgive me. We, uh, for whatever reason, are having a heat problem in the box. So they're gonna fix that uh, after the program today. So I apologize for the technical difficulties. Doctor, please continue. I'm sorry. So what a company like us suddenly doing in, in a coronavirus? What do we have to do with coronavirus? And the story is that for the stroke, I was, uh, when I start dealing with, the, with developing the, the drug for the stroke, one of the problem was a, uh, Okay, if I need to develop the drug, I need to show that I have benefit, medical benefit. But for that, there is what you call NIH stroke score. Mm -hmm. Familiar with it? Very cumbersome, almost unscientific method that require many patients and very expensive and actually prone to fail because you maybe need 5,000 patients to show that you have a benefit, medical benefit, with the delivering oxygen. We're talking, remember, we're talking only maybe a period of 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, but still it's a very small window compared to RTPA treatment or lumbectomy that you need to take out the clot. So what is the benefit that I'm giving the patient? And the, the most important thing is uh, I have an oxygenation material. How I know that I oxygenate the tissue? And that's how Avram Mayevsky, Professor Mayevsky came to, to the picture. And then how we, are, we, are, we actually developed the technology that will have the ability, FDA approved. Now we have a technology that say the tissue is oxygenated. So now I have two things. I have a drug that oxygenate the tissue. Tissue, not the, not the pipes, the tissue. And I have a device approved by the FDA who's saying, yes, the oxygen is there, and I know how much oxygen I give to the tissue. But so that's I, gonna require, obviously, well, the, in, in real time on any one patient, that would require a craniotomy. So you just have to validate it, that it actually occurs in animal studies, I'm assuming. Yeah, animals yeah. and humans. And, and, the, and the, since the device was approved in ARDS patients in the ICU, my idea was, our idea was, okay, we're doing healthy volunteers with the drug, and then we do with the device ARDS, we show a hyperoxia, and we're going to, call, to a, a stroke patients as, a, as an intermediate for function, functionality. Mm -hmm. So I can get attraction by the drug company to do a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Because now I show a hyperoxia with a FDA approved device. Now I'm gonna throw something out at you. But you see, you see the, the clinical development. That's what's the plan. That makes perfectly good sense to me, but I'm gonna throw a little, I'm just gonna try to understand. 
your device, your your drug, the drug, the we're talking specifically about the uh, BX- bioxytran, the B, B- yeah, BXT25. The BXT25. When you, it's, I'm assuming it's, it's oxygenated. Is it, is it carrying oxygen in the delivery vessel itself? In other words, the bag. Is it already no, oxygenated? No, no. So it no. has to go through IV. Right. So go to if, the lung. Right. Pick an oxygen and deliver like like any right. red, so, red blood cells. Right. So in ARDS, if the lungs are not functioning, how do we get the oxygen on the molecule? Besides a mechanical device, or you put it with the machine? Could you? Just out of curiosity, and again, I'm thinking out. I'm just thinking outside the box. I, I want to you know, try to remember me if this works. But could you run it through an oxygenator first before adding it? Now that would get a first pass oxygenation. But once it got out to the tissue and returned to the circulation, if the lungs aren't working, you can do whatever you, can't you want. Replenish it. You can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You can do it. Mm-hmm. No. I'm just thinking about the drug itself to infuse it first pass you would can do give that. you oxygenation before it got to the lungs. You can do that. But it may not benefit because it's just going to be one pass. It's all going to get used up. That was a good idea until, until I thought about it. But go ahead. I probably shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Please forgive me. Go ahead. Anyway, so uh, so the question was, uh, okay, so we are, we're doing ARDS and we have a, a device to, appro- to uh, approve that we know that there's a hyperoxia. And then the coronavirus came to play in, in the last few weeks. We said, wait a minute. We have actually a drug that we can give patients before they fall into a very difficult way. Ah, yes. We actually supplement them, not with that device that goes into um, here. Or a bypass. Or the or, bi- we yeah. give them oxygen. We supply them hyperoxia in their system. Maybe they will not get difficult. Because they're going to have much more oxygen carrying Capacity. capacity, exactly. Uh, okay, well, that makes sense. So, or I can go to the most difficult patient and still can help them because the molecule is so small. It can pass the liquid in the alveoli. Ah. Because it's not red blood cell. Remember I, the story about the, the stroke? I have an advantage of the size. Yeah. Yeah, so, less than 500 so, kilodaltons. So that's why we said we can actually take that drug for coronavirus patients. Beside the fact that we have, we can supply unlimited amount of material. You don't need blood donation or something. Have you discussed this with anybody in the, in the uh, at the at the CDC or FDA? Or we talk. We talk. We talk. NIH we have or somebody. A, the we have early president? discussion to get a grant from the, you know, like DARPA and the, I'm, I'm, uh, we, we are in the early stage. Everything happened the last few weeks. So yes. we're trying to, rec- it's not a normal drug development. We need to push it and we need money. If we, if we have more money, we can push it very quickly. Well, the, yeah, I mean, the safety, the safety is there. Yes. You're talking about carbohydrate and heat. You're talking about two things That's that it. already exist. So... I think that would pass muster very quickly. It's very but I would think that the vice president's task force on uh, on uh, 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 compassionate use on the coronavirus task force, you know, being that this is so safe, would just release it as an option and see. I mean, this is really a game changer. It's a game changer. Absolutely. By the way, I got a I got a message from somebody who said amazing. Um, I have a lot of questions coming over. So do you, I don't know how much longer you no, have I, to go. I, I will, I'll go here because I have more a uh, slide I want to explain. Yeah, let, me, let me, so everybody hold off on your questions. I've got a lot of them from a lot of people. Just be patient and I promise I that's will get all That's questions. the headline on the ARDS that's going on today, okay? Cytosorbid. Somebody just, somebody just asked me a question about it. I just got asked a question about cytosorbid. So if you're listening... Uh, let me see who it was. I can't remember who it was. It was somebody in Germany. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Yes. So Hama, 
uh, on Twitter. Uh, here's your answer. Okay, so we, you can use the ECMO mm -hmm. situation because mm -hmm. now you have, uh, by the way, in the whole discussion, I didn't, I didn't discuss organ preservation, organ transplantation. Remember what's the problem? You have an organ. You want to transfer the, transfer the organ. There are, there are methods of solution, like cooling that. We're talking about now room temperature. Cardioplegia, now you have, we're perfusion about, devices. Exactly, now you're talking about a very powerful uh, solution in room temperature that it's a small molecule who can actually preserve the organ lo much longer. Especially hearts, because you have four heart. hours. Maybe you will get it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. ah. You think I'm exaggerating? I don't know. No, I'm not exaggerating. You're a scary professor to be, so I'm, gonna I'm not get, exaggerating. I'm gonna, I don't know. The, the, the solution. I was pretty skeptical about the perfusing clot, so you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was wrong about that. Probably wrong about this too. The 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 idea of uh, organ preservation, organ transplantation. Uh, and monitoring that, as uh, Professor Majewski described, that combination that you know how much oxygen goes in, you know that you have uh, the ability to give it all the way in a very calculated situation, you actually prevent damage, hyperperfusion. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, that's it. It's so, you, so you have, for the first time, it's not just throwing the organ into a box and say, let's give it a, a solution to oxygenate. You have, a, you have a monitoring on the oxygenation of the tissue, how many molecules of oxygen is, are delivered in every single millisecond to every cell with the device, and in the same time, you control stereometrically how much oxygen goes into the, the, the cell. That's yeah. the control. That's how you, you can keep the organ alive. That's Room temperature. This is incredible stuff. So, so uh, incredible stuff. when I put in there, I put that, uh, by the way, what about trauma? Yeah. And, and, we forgot and, trauma. Yeah, massive trauma with cardiac arrest, because right now, what are they doing? They're doing, they're what, doing, what about, they're doing what about, profound hypothermia, freezing what, them. What about anemia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about ischemia in general? What about Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, that's, uh, of course. That, but they that's, need major that's, surgery, but won't take blood. What about wound healing? Yeah, big problem. What is that? It's all secondary to, to you oxygenation. Want, you want to tell you? I'll sepsis. Give you, sepsis, I'll give you another idea. What about cancer? Tell me about cancer. I did experiment that cancer is always hypoxic. They grow slow. Any, anything you will give to the cancer doesn't work. It doesn't divide. I gave uh, that solution. Cancer start to divide. You give chemotherapy, cancer gone. I have experiment in animals. I mean, you, you overcome the basic problem in hypoxia and cancer. We're talking about mm -hmm. every cancer. I'm not talking about just single. This, this is a solution of hypoxia. And I didn't talk about aging. And I know I'm I, just mentioning hyperbaric chamber replacement, which I'm talking about, you know, uh, damage to the brain, TBI, yeah. damage to stroke. So this is what we're talking about. Very good. The next slide will go to the to the which we're talking about now, concentrating on what we can do for those patients right now that are in bad shape. You need a respirator, maybe give them that solution and avoid them going into respirator. We, if we save, let's say, 50% of the patient from going on, on respirator. Ventilators. Mm -hmm. Ventilators, sorry, ventilators. They will be okay. We, we, maybe it will be okay. We go, we go to that crisis. Or delay them or if delay. they even did need it at all. Exactly. Depending on how much the disease affects the or lungs. Or save their life. What do you give yeah. those patients? They, we don't give them anything. All we do is give them supportive care. 
We have the, you know, the uh, uh, the hydroxychloroquine idea. We have the Rebdibisphere idea. We've got some other drugs, antivirals that we're trying to experiment with and try to fast track. But really what we do with anybody, even with ARDS, secondary to influenza A or H1N1 or whatever the cause may be, is supportive care. That's all we do, period. That's my point. We do nothing. You know, we try to improve oxygenation because we try to, we use ECMO, we use a, an external source to oxygenate. But that can be problematic also when you have high cardiac output and the limitations of a mechanical device that can only treat 40 or 50%, 60% maybe, so you're getting very mixed blood, uh, that that is not being oxygenated with that that is being oxygenated. And depending on how your cannulation is, you could have differential hypoxemia, you could have a lot of problems. We, you know, with somebody who's a very big patient um, with a high car native cardiac output, VV ECMO as a single cannula in out um, is very hard to uh, to get them sufficient oxygen. Very hard. Mm -hmm. We help them, but we don't help them well enough. So now you understand why suddenly we are in uh, COVID nineteen. Yes. Nothing. To do, we didn't plan that. Simply part of our, our clinical plan end up with the uh, maybe helping those patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I go further. Uh, we have here a, a cartoon that it describes very easily to the audience how that molecule can overcome the barrier of the fluid, even uh, debris on the alveoli. Even with a patient that has because wet lungs. Of the, yeah, because, wet, they, stiff lungs. because the molecule is so small. From, it, it's not the, the, the support mechanism is the size, in this case, plus the, I'm not, I'm not talking about the carrying the oxygen. So they, you can have different way to carry oxygen, but the size and the nature of the support for the carrier, which in this case is the him, the natural him, allow you to play in that zone that red blood cells are totally limited. They are not get oxygen. No, your alveolar capillary wall separation is is exists, and if it if it breaks down, you have, you've got a bigger problem. You have a hemorrhagic lung, or you have some other problem. Uh, you know, with pulmonary edema, plasma leaking through. You, it doesn't work very well. It has to. You have to have that uh, alveolar capillary membrane separation. Now remember that the only we, option. we need to do obviously the trial. We need to get it safe, in safety. Uh, in, uh, the, the, the plan is very simple. Once we have the money, we just go and do it quickly as possible. You, pu you put it in uh, healthy people. You measure the toxicity in healthy volunteers. Once we have that established, we go with the device that we have and we can measure functionality of the drug. It's not medical claim on ARDS. It's taking the ARDS patient and show the functionality. If we help them, and I think we'll help them, it will end up with like another 200 patients will be a medical claim. But it's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to the point that as a small company, a drug company comes in and say, okay, let's put on this company $200 million and 5,000 patients and do NIH score, a stroke score and show that the brain get oxygenated. So for us, the ARDS is just on the way to the stroke. Right. It's not the goal. Ah, if we help the corner- happened. Exactly. This just, so your track was this, and this exactly. train decided to cross your track. Exactly. The COVID-19 track. I didn't finish yet the whole story, because we're going, we're going from one to another, and that's the, and as we, by the way, I was influenced by those three guys in the 90s that got the Nobel Prize, and, and that's the, I have a question. What is hypoxia? From the 90s, I always said hypoxia, it's a disease. 
that recognition of the Nobel Prize, it's looking on that hypoxia, not as something that you lack oxygen. That's the disease, it's like cancer. You mm. treat hypoxia. We have a drug to treat hypoxia. It's a disease like treating cancer. That's the mistake. Everybody look on oxygenation as another perfusion thing. This is not another perfusion thing. That's so basic. It's like you're treating cancer, but it's broad. It's huge, but it's still a disease indication. Hypoxia, it's a disease. You eventually become old because of hypoxia. Or have apoptosis. Or that. have apoptosis or other things, including cancer, because cancer works in hypoxic condition. That's why you have cancer. If not, the immune system will take it out. You follow my, my, the audience need to understand it. Why I'm so excited about these three guys. They validate my thinking and my activity as a chemist to do it uh, in terms of ma making the drug or the device. Recognizing that, that, Recognize that, that we became a, a leader state, because of saying. them. We became suddenly a leader in the field. Before that, I was marginalized. Mm -hmm. You measure our oxygen, who cares? We have, we can measure oxygen in the, in the artery, periphery, oxygen, mean nothing. All this machine that people measure their oxygen, it's not worth it because they don't measure the tissue. It's worthless. Now I said, how you can set on industry of $100 billion worthless? Yeah, it's, it's, that's a fact. You don't measure oxygen. You measure oxygen in the pipes. What it helps you? You don't know if the organ is dying. What is the information you have? It's, you have a perfect oxygen, a perfect oxygen situation in your finger or in, the, in your arteries and all that, and they are in your kidneys <laughs> or you have cancer. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. You follow my, my, yes, my I do. thinking? I will tell you this, it's just a, an aside. Um, man, we have a lot of questions. Um, I promise I'm gonna get to them. Um, and that is that, uh, oh, well, we just, oh my God, I just lost, my, I, I looked, saw the questions and then forgot my doggone question. Go ahead, let me let you talk. That's a, that by the way, I'm, I'm describing here the discovery by the, by the, the late Nobel Prize, but Amgen, by the way, what, what is Amgen? How Amgen started as a biotech company, they just took the EPO, which is one of the drug, one of the uh, protein that are produced along the way that's supposed to activate the red blood cells to make more red blood cells because that's the HIF yeah. indicate uh, activate the, the cascade. Mm -hmm. Then those that the EPO will generate more red blood cells to get more oxygen. Mm -hmm. It's simply the same thing. My thinking was why to go all the way to the to the enzymatic pro protein to, process. To the EPO, why not to, to supply the oxygen in the first place yeah. and, and uh, prevent the HIF? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the beginning. Yeah. Wow. What we are doing is that what, whatever do engine do with the EPO in the cascade of event to get more oxygen to the tissue, I say, wait a minute, I have a chemistry, I will de deliver to the tissue the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Why I need to go all the way to the? I mean, I'm not saying that. Because that takes time. That's a process. It, it you don't just time. give a shot of EPO. Exactly. And they suddenly, when you turn around after 15 minutes, they have. But a, we can a give rig. a shot, and we're okay. Boom. Because you're actually giving an oxygen carrier. I'm giving molecule. the oxygen. You're you're skipping all of the steps of I'm going to the first. I'm going to bone to marrow the production. Heat. And then what do you do when somebody can't produce them? They 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 high they. The factor is could produce because of hypoxia. Right. You el eliminate hypoxia, there's no HIF. So the cascade doesn't exist. Now, can you block the stimulant? Well, of course, it's short nine hours. You're just treating a, a situation. I, I treat at the situation. At some point, I you don't need let to it fix your, at exactly. some point, it needs to be repaired. For sure. You're buying time. 
I'm buying time, exactly. Buying Nothing time. more than buying time. Buying time, yeah. And, and by the way, sense. I'm not saying that I'm the f- most efficient one, and I'm not saying that, uh, that w- that's the ultimate solution. Don't take me wrong. Uh, there's nothing, co- there's no silver bullet in biology. There's always partial solution. Everyone that's in the field will have a contribution. Yeah. We're talking about, what we're talking about? 50 billion a year, maybe in sales, 100 billion dollars, billion dollars a year of sales of this type of product. So what? <laughs> so it will be 15 billion dollars in sales a year. It will be another company will do another 15 billion. But it's the size of the market is the hypoxia market. Mm-hmm. That's what I call it, the hypoxia, the lack of oxygen. Mm-hmm. When each one will find a way to uh, to work the best in certain circumstances for that specific chemistry. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying that we are the best. Or that I'm not specific saying that we are anatomy the, and physiology. Exactly. And I, I don't want people try me all the time. People say to me, "Hey, as a chemist, you need to compare yourself to this. You are better than superior, inferior." That's not true. And there doesn't exist in drug development superior or inferior. Every chemistry that was measured, the toxicity is known has a place, any chemistry, as very long good. as you understand the- I appreciate that. I think that's very, very, very nice of you. I would think that's very good. I'm glad you said that. Okay, so do you they, have more slides? Yeah. They, I'm trying here, for, here to talk about the strategy of the commercialization, which as I said, they, I'm repeating why the device is important for the drug, why the drug is important for the device, they're coming hand in hand. It doesn't mean that it's a drug device approval. It means that I use the device to validate the drug. That's Makes it. sense. That's it. But the device has its own space. It's nothing to do with the drug, okay? Also, uh, uh, we have that because of the device, <clears throat> we have something that all the companies in the space don't have. We can pursue medical claim by the FDA. If I'll be successful, I don't know. I need to be there to tell you if I'll be able to show to the FDA and then extract that type of a claim, which is, doesn't exist actually. But I have the ability to do that. Remember, the, drug, the device is approved. If the drug shows that it increases uh, the oxygen in the tissue and I don't make any medical claim on that, maybe after X amount of patients, statistically, they will agree, or maybe not, but at least I will get a drug company on, on board mm-hmm. or par- partner. And that's what you need. And that's what I need. I yeah. need a big partner. Yeah. B- big companies will not do anything with you if you don't get to a certain level mm-hmm. of of. A, what I call proof of concept. Well, I am, yes, I understand. I'm very familiar with proof of concept. And I'm really hopeful that, um, that and we're gonna go over this after the, we're gonna, we're gonna whenever you're ready, we're gonna loop uh, Dr. Majewski back in and have like an open discussion about some of these things. I've got a ton of questions. And then um, we're gonna take a short break and come back and talk to people who stay online that may be connected. I'm hoping that people out there that are listening to this will try to keep discussing it, share this, and bring an awareness to what it is we're talking about here, because it is revolutionary. This is highly provocative, very revolutionary thinking. And uh, it's way outside of what we're all familiar with. So that's what I'm hoping from our audience. But then the other audience that come that that once we take our break and we're done with the CME portion of this or the CEU portion of this, we can be more free to talk a little bit more about that and bring Mike in as well. Okay. So whenever you're, I'll let you finish up your slides and then we'll go to these questions. I'll, let, I'll finish the presentation by saying uh, from a commercial perspective, when you look on the chemistry and all that, uh, so the applications are enormous. So you do the chemistry, you get it, that you show that it's safe, you make a proof of concept, and then the company, you cannot go everywhere. So the company, what we'll do as a company, we will do licensing. And that's how we develop in the different areas. Mm -hmm. You can capture in very short period of time, you do 10, 15 licenses. 
And that's how you create the, your footprint in different area in medicine that you cannot, you cannot be as a, a organization unless you raise, you know, half a billion dollars. Unless you're Eli Lilly. Yeah, you cannot do that. So, or you go with a large drug company, or you go with 20 drug companies, and each one specialized in a hypoxia in kidney, liver, a stroke, stroke, acute a, coronary syndrome, any heart issues, a, cancer. anemia, cancer, and that, that's the, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot take, uh, and that's a huge thing. I did not know that cancer was that that it depended on hypoxia. I didn't know that. Of course. That's I didn't know the that. The number one. That's number one. Why, why cancel drug fail? The hypoxia. It doesn't matter if it's genetic, immuno, immunogenic, uh, immune, immune uh, method or, or uh, you know, chemistry, radiation. It's all hypoxia. Hmm. Interesting. That is very interesting. Okay. You ready for some questions? Yes. Okay. So let's start up uh, up here. Um, can this drug, uh, can this drugs will have to help reduce? Okay. Can this drug help to reduce the reperfusion injury seen after ischemia, such as you see with coronary bypass surgery? Yes. How, so, how would it do that? I can tell you what my theory is, but you tell say, me. Say your theory. My theory is you infuse this via the cardioplegia into the heart so it never becomes ischemic. You don't have blood flow, but you let it stay oxygenated. You answer the question? Okay, so I answered you. So I've been listening to you. And by the I've way, been listening I'm listening to Dr. Majewski too. Welcome back, Doc. But yeah, yeah. By the way, I, we need to remember to the audience. They need to remember, I'm a chemist. Yes. I yes. cannot answer medical question. I have no education as a medical doctor. Neither do I. <laughs> no, but but you need to remember, the audience need to remember that. Yes, but, and they do. I so think I have a limitation in my that. understanding in a certain level. Because yes. it's not, I don't have the, I have the education, I read, but it's not a I'll self Educate, you don't have not, the clinical medical experience. Exactly. I understand so, that. Because we I, understand in the end that. of the day, I'm the guy who is responsible for making the chemistry and manufacture that. But that's be, as far as I can go with yes, that. You know I think saying? that's fair. And I appreciate you making that point. Um, so the answer to your question, uh, I mean, is yes, by avoiding the ischemia to start with. Um, and actually, let me bring Dr. Mayasef, uh, Mayevsky. Mayevsky into this. So Dr. Majewski, many times when we do um, coronary bypass surgery or we do uh, peripheral vascular surgery to open up blood vessels that have been blocked by plaque or whatever the reason may be, um, we measure the flow in the coronary artery with a device that is a, uh, it's, uh, it's TT, TT, T, I, T, uh, transit time flow measurement. And right. so it measures the flow through the artery, the bypass vessel, but it also measures runoff. So you know if the bypass graft is actually open and has a high probability of long-term patency. However, with your device, just because you bypass a graft does it again, doesn't mean that the that's a big pipe. So you can take this and look at the distribution, your device, put it literally on the heart, it's easy to sterilize, right. and measure the oxygen uh, balance index and know whether or not that blood vessel is perfusing the Absolutely. muscle adequately. Absolutely. So you yeah. would also you can, be able to you, use it you diagnostically. Can you can hear me? I'm sorry? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah, basically you can use it intraoperatively once you do the bypassing, you can take a probe and put it in the distal area of the blood vessels that you treat. And you just put the probe in, measure the baseline, and then occlude the vessel for 20 seconds, which doesn't make any arm into any arm, and see if the mitochondria is responding 
posterior, uh, distal to the area that you do the grafting. Mm -hmm. So you can measure the tissue level oxygenation immediately after the bypassing. Very interesting. Yeah. Now with with heart with coronaries, sometimes you know you don't necessarily have symptoms until you exercise. So you're using, you right. know, you're making the heart work a little harder. So you may not really see, you may see a a very mild deficit, if at all, in a resting state on let's say something with an eighty percent blockage. Um, but you certainly would know whether or not that heart is getting the, the, the uh, you know, the right, you, you would probably be able to tell. If it was 100% occluded, you would definitely know. Definitely know. Um, but that's very interesting. But I think I, the- There's another point. And, uh, look on that chemistry. I choose the heme. The heme will choose the right oxygen. Yeah, that's true. Very good point. So I don't need to worry about the right oxygen. The heme will choose the right oxygen. Of course. Right, only one. There's only one. Do you see that? So you, you, you understand the magnitude of that? I do. It's profound and it's provocative. Because I don't need to worry in my modification what oxygen I choose from different... You see, as a chemist, you have the ring of the Schrodinger equation allow the oxygen to sit there with 16 position open. Okay, this mutase, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Different oxygen species. Yes. With active oxygen. I only can bind to one oxygen, which is the right one with my molecule. I don't worry about the other Species. So when you have oxygen radicals, you don't have to worry about them occupying this. Exactly. It won't do it. Exactly. I, we understand. I understand. But I get it. It's not. Which is very important. People, when and you that's have, why I, I is again, I'm not sure that I'm it. That's why I said I don't want to say that I'm superior or inferior to the other methodology of oxygenation. I'm saying I'm conservative in my thinking philosophically. W I know at least one problem I solved, I don't go to another oxygen. Mm -hmm. That's my point. I think it's a good point. Um, so you, where do you obtain the heme? I think you had that in your slides. Does it have to be obtained from humans? I would think not, but No, I, where I, do I you take get it from heme? cow. People so it's bovine, uh, yeah, bovine because, heme. Because you have a abundance of that. It's mammalian, yeah. yeah and it's, but it's, cow give you 14 liters. Yeah. So you can give it, you can create huge amount of material. From one cow. With, with one cow. You don't even have to take off 14 liters. You could just take a few and let the cow continue to make it. Or you, or you have a manufacturer. You can take, you can make uh, uh, tons of material. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, so bovine is the preferred choice, but you could do equine if you wanted to. You can do anything It's just not as accepted. Mammalia, it has to be mammalian. Mammalian. I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Um, what precipitates By the way, the it, 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 be, be, in the past, FDA approved cow. Ah, okay. So it's easier to go to the FDA because everything is there. People, there are eight, there were almost 4,000 experiments on human, 4,000 human, including approval in South Africa and Russia and other countries on on oxygen, on a hemoglobin, modified hemoglobin from cow. So why not to take what people already did for 50 years? Mm -hmm. And that's the reason for the cow. That makes sense. Okay, I, I think I know the answer to this too, and I want, I'm gonna let you answer it. What precipitates the molecule to release the oxygen to the tissue? I would imagine it's, but, and not prematurely. And similarly, what, part precipitates the molecule to accept oxygen back from the lung. I think it's related to the regular uh, uh, duty of uh, him by definition. It will be less pressure, it will release. So it's just a pressure gradient. Yeah. yeah. If it's more. low tension here, high tension here, it moves yeah. that way. If the, it's the, um, the him is like, a, I'm a crystallographer, okay? We can talk about later about the galactin, 
Wh- how we haven't even talked about we, did, we didn't even talk about the galactin. We need to mention that. Yes. Well, why don't we do that? Okay. So let's talk about galactin. But that's what I said. I'm a crystallographer, and I, I'm not a full crystallographer. I have a publication on the on subject, but I discovered a, in my postdoc, I was the first person who expressed the gene for lectin that was a protein on cancer cells that recognized only the sugar galactose. And uh, I decided to call it galactose binding lectin, or in my publication, I call it galactin. Since then, there are about a 4,000 publications on galactin. And uh, I just announced this week that I want to create, a, I, over the years I develop antagonists to galactin, a galactin antagonist to block the galactin. And I had, a, I managed companies in clinical trial to, mani- to manipulate the galactin, the sugar to bind to galactin. It's a sugar that it's antagonist. And the, one of the, my biggest uh, research subject was galactin-1. So corona, on the coronavirus, the corona has galactin-1. So I have a drug, potential drug, that bind to galactin-1 and can inhibit the corona. So the spikes, yeah. the, the crown portion of the virus. Yeah, the drug, is- was drug that is like galactin it, one? Yeah, that's that's it's in the publication. It's all over. I, I didn't do it. I mean, people already prove it. They completely cleared coronavirus in animals with anti-galactin one drugs. But they they don't. They are not good for human. They are uh, in model. But I have the the molecule to block the the coronavirus. So I I'm trying to get now money to do that as quick as possible to try it on patients. I think you need to call the vice president's task force. I really do. We're going to call them for you. Maybe. They, 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 I mean, they always take my calls. <laughs> that's a serious, <laughs> that's a serious uh, story. It is because, a serious story. Because I, I, who know that the galactin one is the corona target. I didn't even know what collectin was. It's I've a, learned a lot today. It's a, f- there are about four, t- today there are, I was the first one who described the structure of galactin. And uh, I, I asked early in my career when I did my PhD, I did my PhD on carbohydrate. And I uh, was, uh, was fascinated by the fact that sugar can do so many things so precisely. That it's a very, it's a, pre- it's a fine tuning of recognition. By the way, the reason that people try to block coronavirus with the antibody on the galactin, they fail because it's not really, uh, the antibody is too big. Only sugar can do that. We really, I think that we have a very good chance to have a, a drug that can clear the virus from the patient right away. It's not, it's not antibody. It's not a protease inhibitor. It's not mechanistically, doesn't go into the cell interruption of the mechanism, the virus. It's just simple. Or it damage the it's RNA simple, or DNA. It's a simpler clearance through the liver of the virus. <laughs> just by blocking its ability to recognize blocking the key, the key that allows it in the cell. Bla- blocking the key to allow it to the cell. That's yeah. it. Wow, that's incredible. Um, a question I have here, I think I know the answer to this too, uh, but uh, John, I hope we answered your question. How might this work in decompression illness with scuba divers? I think that's a nitrogen, uh, an excess of nitrogen though that's coming out. I don't think anything would work other than hyperbarism in that case. I, I don't, I mean, to answer your question, I think I can answer the question. Uh, decompression sickness for scuba divers is really that you, uh, nitrogen is inert and so you absorb a lot more of it and then when you come out of 
the pressure environment that nitrogen comes out and you can have embolic events and so forth. And the only way to clear that is to recompress the person, force the nitrogen back into solution and then slowly clear it with 100% oxygen environment and then bring them out of their decompression uh, slowly. I think that's the answer to that, I'm pretty sure. Um, I see that the new viral inhibitor is expected to restore adaptive immune system to normal function. Is there a possibility of binding to the protein spikes COVID-19 virus, thus stopping the cell entry? Well, Bill, you just answered, the, just question answered the question with a galactin-1 okay. uh, inhibitor. And by the way, uh, that experiment was not done by me. It was independently by groups, uh, it's all over the place. Uh, simply the difficulties, uh, people uh, on the audience need to understand I, uh, as a structural uh, crystallographer and published art a uh, scientist uh, with my collaborators, we try to find the right key, which is the sugar, to the right lock. By sheer uh, serendipity, because the whole idea of cancer metastasis is the recognition of the cell in the bloodstream, the cancer cells survive the immune system by creating clusters. And the clusters can be interrupted. I just published in 1993 showing that by adding a little bit, a minute amount of sugar to galactin-3 as a galactin-3 inhibitor, I was inhibiting completely metastasis in my publication in 1993. That was the first time that I could show that I can inhibit metastasis. So, so the coronavirus simply has, any virus, by the way, they, the, any virus, any infectious disease virus has its own galactin. Influenza has different galactin. There are 15 galactins by sheer luck in this case, I was working on the galactin-1 and galactin-3 inhibitor. And the corona has galactin-1. And that was in the phase two, finished phase two. There was like 200 patients. I can, I can take a similar thing, design it very quickly, and you have an anti-corona drug, non-toxic. That's my my now my thing that I want to push it. I want to bring, I want to come back to that. We I, need I a press release don't about let me, it. Don't let me forget this. We need all your press releases. Um, uh, Dr. Majewski. Yeah. Um, it, someone in uh, at the uh, Leipzig Heart Center in Germany is asking, um, if you use this advanced monitoring, your, your MDX uh, viewer, to see DO2, VO2 in combination with ECLS, um, so resuscitative, you know, extracorporeal resuscitation. I am, uh, and they just apologize for joining the conversation late, but do, we, do you have any way with your device of measuring oxygen utilization? In other words, I think you do because you're looking at mitochondrial health. So if you're, if, because you could have oxygen delivery, but no uptake. And I've seen that happen before. Um, and if you shift the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve far enough, you can actually inhibit the release of the hemoglobin to the, uh, the oxygen from the hemoglobin to the tissue. Correct. So, so can you address that, Dr. Majewski? Yeah, at this point in time, I don't think that we can calculate uh, accurately, quantitatively so easy the relation between supply and demand. We can, in real time, we can follow it, uh, you know, to follow the the, the tissue uh, vitality or tissue metabolic score. So it's not uh, quantitative in the same term as the, as the, uh, the guy asked you about. So I think we have to bridge somehow to get some more information from patients and try to use the, uh, the classical calculations of VO2 and DO2 and see how can we fix our concept into the same frame of calculation. 
Mm -hmm. We didn't do it yet because we didn't do enough patients yet. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're looking at, if you're measuring mitochondrial, I mean, you won't have metabolism, right? So you can, I mean, are you, so let me just try to understand, you're measuring that there's oxygen in the environment. So am I yeah. getting that right? If but I were you, to take, if I were to take a- it in the same, in the same quantity. So some sort of quantitation problem here, how to bridge between the classical cal calculation way mm -hmm. and the mitochondria. Nobody really c combined the mitochondrial parameter to the old kind of parameter that's calculated. Mm -hmm. So it has to be some bridging process between the two concepts. Yes. Because nobody really measured before mitochondria in patients. Mm -hmm. We are the only one that we got FDA approved device to monitor mitochondrial function by NADH monitoring. Right. So there is no data in patients yet enough to do this kind of calculation. So I think it's something that will be developed in time. Once mm -hmm. we get enough patients, maybe people from quantitative biology will come and do some modeling and, and uh, find out sort of calculation way, what will be the best equation, how to develop it. That makes a so lot of, that makes a lot of sense. But I think that, you know, just sort of thinking logically, if you, if you don't have oxygen, you're going to have mitochondrial failure and then you're, you would see that. So you're not so only, you so, so you, right. So you, you, you could infer that yes, there's oxygen there, but it's not being utilized because the mitochondria is dying. Right. You know, if you have apoptosis, you're gonna see that. By the way, uh, I didn't mention a, a new area in uh, therapy, which many, many people are not aware of that. It's called mitochondria transplantation. Yeah, tell me about that. That's very interesting. Uh, you can uh, restore tissue by taking autologous mitochondria and inject that to a tissue which it, it's actually you do tissue repair. Like stem, it's like stem cells only. Like stem cells, but you, you inject the mitochondria to yeah. repl replenish the tissue. Yeah, that's a very interesting. That's People do be. that. They, they so how outcome. long have you been working on this? What? How long have you been working on this? On the, on the, on the. On this oxygen carrying fluid? Uh, 30 years. 30 years. So 30 years of your life have been spent just on this one project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and wonder, I'm, I'm, I'm in the modification of the, those molecules. I have the first patent that I wrote, which by the way, this, the only patent in the field that I, I stabilize the, a, him in sugar mm -hmm. in I got it in the, in the 2005 that's the first one there are a few others that I did I, I'm basically the book carbohydrate drug design it's about carbohydrate modification we I modified chemotherapy with carbohydrate by modifying the chemotherapy with carbohydrate, I make the chemotherapy non-toxic. And I'm using the chemotherapy at the carbohydrate like antibody. Since they recognize lectin, I can use the antibody. If I have the right key, I can attach chemistry, not antibody, it's not biology, it's not biological material. It's a chemical structure to a, another chemical structure, which is in this case, the chemotherapy. And now the carbohydrate became, behave like an antibody because it recognized the galactin. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's a completely different uh, universe. These are game changers. So, yeah, these are game changers. Okay, one last question. Uh, no, I answered it. Okay, uh, no, I need to ask you this question. Oh, he answered it. Okay, so that was the one from Bill with the uh, binding the COVID-19 virus. Oh, I did have one other question. Um, what are your views on somebody, in, another person in Germany wanted to know your thoughts on Cytosorb for COVID-19 patients? If you have an opinion, you may not have an opinion about that, but I did, I got asked. Now, Cytosorb is the molecular adsorption therapy, right? So it runs the plasma through a filter 
a, a, a type of hemoconcentrator that has the ability to adsorb the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, virus or the inflammatory mediators, right? Is that what that is? That's what that is, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's molecular adsorption therapy or, yeah. Good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time the virus goes to, you lower the, the viral load, there will be more viruses coming from other cells, you know, when mm -hmm. they explode and all mm -hmm. that. It's a... So you can control temporarily, but you can't, you have to, you have to really clear it completely. You see, the, what, when I'm talking about the... Because intracellular, they're still producing duplicates and yeah. then they're going to release. Yeah, the, so you can the, clear them from plasma. You can't clear them from the cell. In my opinion, there's a, there's a phenomenon which you called cytokine storm. Yes, we're very familiar with cytokine storms. And guess what? You, how you can block cytokine storm with introducing galactin. Anti-galactin, sorry, anti-galactin molecule. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that I will uh, re remove the virus with the liver, which by the way, this is a different mechanism. That's the most efficient mechanism. It's not like outside the body with some devices that we're talking about the liver, they do it in a huge capability to do remove a, you know, foreign structure. Right. It's a filter. It's a filter. So, it's yeah. a much better filter than any filter that human ever did. But sure. uh, the idea that you can block the cytokine storm, that by itself allow the immune system to operate. Because you have to reset it, that's true. The, the, that's what happens is you, your pro-inflammatory mediators overwhelm your anti-inflammatory mediators and the imbalance just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. The, it's a big problem. We need to also remember, the audience listen to me and say, wow, the guy really has something. But there are today about 300 different scientists that each one propose <laughs> his own universe of view how to get rid of the virus. Mm -hmm. So I may, uh, but I know one thing, I'm the only one with carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at least well, I have the advantage. Well, listen, I appreciate your, your, your humility. Uh, it's very attractive and it's really appreciated. I think you've been very, very humble um, in your opinions. I think you've been very clear about how you feel. This has been extremely informative. Uh, beyond informative, very highly provocative, very informative, exciting. Dr. Uh, Majewski, I cannot thank you enough for staying up so late, um, coming to us all the way from Tel Aviv. It's so appreciated. You too have been a, uh, a very humble servant of science, and uh, we can't thank both of you enough uh, for this terrific CEU program. This has been very